Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton, and today we're going to finish up our discussion on trigonometric functions of real numbers. So in the previous video we talked about how to find the values of the six trigonometric functions for 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and also their equivalent in radians, which would be pi divided by 6, pi divided by 4, and pi divided by 3. We also identified the domain and range of the trigonometric functions. In this video we're going to talk about how to find and use the reference angles to evaluate trigonometric functions, how to use the properties of even and odd trigonometric functions, and how to recognize and use fundamental trigonometric identities. So let's talk about values of trigonometric functions. If you want to compute values of the trigonometric functions for any real number, we need to first determine their signs. And the signs of the trigonometric functions depend on the quadrant that is determined by the value of t lies in. So the signs of the six basic trigonometric functions depends on the quadrant that t lies in. So if you have t that lies in quadrant one, then all trigonometric functions are positive. Sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, they're all positive in the first quadrant. However, in quadrant two, notice that the y-coordinate is positive in quadrant two, but the x-coordinate is negative. So in other words, the second quadrant, you'll have the sine function positive because the y-coordinate is defined as the sine function of the angle, and the cosecant function, because that's the reciprocal of the y-coordinate, one divided by y, will also be positive. All the other four basic trigonometric functions will be negative in quadrant two. In quadrant three, the bottom left corner of the x-y plane, you have the x-coordinate negative and also the y-coordinate negative. This means that the tangent function will be positive because the tangent function was defined to be the ratio of the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. Well, if the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate are both negative, the ratio will be a positive value. So tangent's positive, and because cotangent is a reciprocal of the tangent function, or it's the ratio of x-coordinate divided by the y-coordinate, and they're both negative, the cotangent function will also be positive. The other four trigonometric functions will be negative in quadrant three. And in the bottom right corner, you have quadrant four, Notice that the x-coordinate is positive in quadrant four, but the y-coordinate is negative. So the cosine function this time will be positive because the cosine function was defined to be the x-coordinate of the terminal point. And if the x-coordinate is positive, then the cosine function will be positive. And secant will also be positive because it's the reciprocal of the cosine function, or it's the ratio of one divided by the x-coordinate of your terminal point. And the x-coordinate is positive, so secant will be positive. The other four basic trigonometric functions will be negative in quadrant four. So on the right, you have a summary of the signs of the sine and cosecant function the cosine and the secant function, and also the tangent and the cotangent functions. Notice that sine and cosecant are positive only when the y-coordinates are positive. Notice that cosine and secant are positive whenever the x-coordinate or the x-value is positive. And tangent and cotangent are positive whenever the x-value and the y-value agree signs because the ratio will be a positive value. The following mnemonic device will help you remember which trigonometric functions are positive in each quadrant. All students take calculus. So this means all functions are positive in quadrant one, the sine function is positive in quadrant two, tangent function is positive in quadrant three, and then cosine is positive in quadrant four. So how does that help us when we want to evaluate trigonometric functions? If we want to evaluate trigonometric functions for any real number, we're gonna follow these following steps. Step one, find the reference number, t bar, associated with the terminal point, t. Step two, determine the sine of the trigonometric function of t by noting what quadrant in which the terminal point lies. And then step three, the value of the trigonometric function of t is the same except possibly the sine as the value of the trigonometric function of the reference number t bar. So example two, evaluating trigonometric functions. Find the exact value for the following trigonometric functions. Number one, cosine of seven pi divided by three. Well, that means that t is in quadrant one because it's seven pi divided by three. It's pi divided by three beyond one revolution counterclockwise of the unit circle. And so that means the reference number t bar is pi divided by three in quadrant one. And so cosine of seven pi divided by three will be the same value as cosine of pi over three. And we know that the cosine function is defined to be the x-coordinate of your terminal point when the angle is pi over three. And so the x-coordinate is one half whenever the angle is pi divided by three in quadrant one. Number two, tangent of negative seven pi divided by four. So notice that the terminal point t is negative seven pi divided by four. This is negative pi over four short of one revolution of the unit circle clockwise because the value of t is negative. And notice that t is in quadrant one if you go clockwise a distance of seven pi divided by four. So t bar is pi divided by four. That's gonna help us find out what is tangent of negative seven pi over four as follows. Tangent of negative seven pi over four is the same value as tangent of pi over four. And if it's in quadrant one, we know that the x value and the y value are both positive, 
and tangent of pi over 4 is equal to positive 1. So tangent of negative 7 pi over 4 is also equal to positive 1. Number 3, let's do sine of 19 pi divided by 4. So notice, if your two revolutions of the unit circle counterclockwise, that would be 16 pi over 4, or 4 pi. We're 3 pi divided by 4 beyond two revolutions of the unit circle counterclockwise. So we're actually in quadrant 2. However, we're only pi divided by 4 short of a half turn of a unit circle. So t bar, the reference number, is pi divided by 4. And so sine of 19 pi over 4 is the same value as sine of 3 pi over 4. However, since the reference number is pi divided by 4, we know that the sine function at pi divided by 4 is square root 2 divided by 2 because the y value is positive. And so sine of 3 pi over 4 will also be the same value. So it means sine of 19 pi divided by 4 is the same as sine of 3 pi over 4, which will be the same value as sine of pi over 4, which is square root 2 divided by 2. We can also evaluate trigonometric functions for other real values of t. So scientific and graphing calculators are programmed to find the sine function, the cosine function, and the tangent function correct to the number of digits in the display. So the calculator must be set to radian mode to evaluate trigonometric functions of real numbers t. So make sure that you're in radian mode. Press mode on the graphing calculator and it's the fourth option down, you are in radian mode. However, you can also evaluate trigonometric functions if you have your argument of the trigonometric function in terms of the degrees by scrolling to the right and hitting enter on degrees. Or you can change back to radians by scrolling back to the left and hitting enter on radian. So notice that the sine function, the cosine function, and the tangent function are programmed into any scientific or graphing calculator. However, if you want to find the values of cosecant, secant, and cotangent using a calculator, we need to use the following trigonometric reciprocal identities. Remember that cosecant of t is the same thing as 1 divided by sine of t, because cosecant and sine are reciprocal functions of one another. Secant of t is equal to 1 divided by cosine of t, because secant and cosine are reciprocal functions of one another. And cotangent of t is equal to 1 divided by tangent of t because cotangent and tangent are reciprocal of one another. So example three, using a calculator to evaluate trigonometric functions. Use either a scientific or graphing calculator to evaluate the following trigonometric expressions. So number one, we're going to evaluate secant of two. So secant of two is not to be confused with the inverse cosine function. They're two different functions. So secant, if you want to obtain secant of two, you need to type in one divided by cosine of two and make sure that you're in radians when you actually type this in because this is two radians. And so this will be approximately negative 2.403 when you round to three decimal places. Number two, cotangent of negative 0 0.83. So again, the cotangent function is not the same as the inverse tangent function. Cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent function. So if you want to evaluate cotangent of negative 0.83, it would be 1 divided by tangent of negative 0.83 in parentheses as the argument of the tangent function, and you find out it's negative 0.915 if you round to three decimal places. Number three, let's say you wanted to evaluate cosecant of 2.2 radians. Well, cosecant is not the same thing as the inverse sine function, Cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine function. So you would want to type in 1 divided by sine of 2.2 radians, and this is approximately 1.237 when you round the three decimal places. So now we're going to turn our attention to developing properties of the six trigonometric functions. Let's first consider the relationship between the trigonometric functions of t and those of negative t, or the opposite of t. So notice if you have t, that determines a terminal point on your unit circle. So if you go a distance counterclockwise along the unit circle because t is positive, you obtain this terminal point x comma y. Now let's notice what happens if you go a distance of t clockwise. Well, that would be negative t. If t was positive, then negative t would be a negative value, and that means you go clockwise a distance of absolute value of t. And so that ends up at this point x comma negative y as a terminal point. Notice that the x coordinates are the same, but the y coordinates are the opposite sign. So that's going to determine the values of the six trigonometric functions. If we obtain a terminal point of x comma y, that means the sine function of this value for t would be the y coordinate or y. However, if you're doing sine of negative t, notice that the y coordinate is defined to be the sine function, the y coordinate is negative y for the terminal point p x comma negative y. And so sine of t is y, but sine of negative t is negative y. That means sine of negative t is the opposite sine of the sine function evaluated at t. 
So in other words, the sine function is an odd function, because whenever t has been replaced with a negative t, you obtain the opposite output value, or the opposite of the original function. On the other hand, you can talk about cosine in the same way. Cosine of t would be the x-coordinate whenever the terminal point is x comma y, so cosine is defined to be the x-coordinate, so cosine of t is equal to x. However, cosine of negative t, if you have negative t as your value for the argument of the cosine function, then the x-coordinate for this terminal point would also be positive x. So cosine of t is x, and cosine of negative t is also equal to x. So that means cosine of negative t is equal to cosine of positive t. So whenever this happens, that means cosine is an even function. Because if you replace t with a negative t as the argument of your trigonometric function, the output values are the same. So the sine function is an odd function. However, the cosine function is an even function. Now let's talk about tangent function. The tangent function of t was the ratio of the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. So for the value for t, you would have the y-coordinate is positive y, and the x-coordinate is positive x. And so tangent of t would be y divided by x. However, if you do tangent of negative t as the argument of the tangent function, if you have negative t, you have this terminal point, x comma negative y. Well, tangent of negative t would be negative y divided by positive x. That means tangent of negative t is the opposite sign of tangent of positive t. So again, the tangent function is an odd function because you replace t with a negative t and you obtain the opposite of the entire function, opposite of tangent of t. Therefore, we just found out that the sine function and the tangent function are odd functions. However, the cosine function is an even function. The above calculations, together with the reciprocal identities for cosecant, secant, and cotangent, completes the following table of even and odd properties for all six basic trigonometric functions. So the theorem, even and odd properties, the sine, cosecant, tangent, and cotangent functions are odd functions. The cosine and the secant functions are even functions. And each of the six trigonometric functions satisfy the following even and odd properties. Sine of the opposite of t is the opposite of sine of positive t. Cosine of negative t is cosine of t. Tangent of the opposite of t is the opposite of tangent of t. Cosecant of negative t is the opposite of cosecant of positive t. Secant of negative t is the same as secant of positive t. And cotangent of negative t is the opposite of cotangent of positive t. Notice that if you replace t with a negative t, the only two functions that remain the same are cosine and secant. The other four trigonometric functions are odd functions, which means if you replace t with a negative t, you obtain the opposite of the original function. So let's see how these even and odd properties can help us evaluate trigonometric functions. So example four, even and odd trigonometric functions. Use the even and odd identities of the six trigonometric functions to evaluate the following trigonometric expressions. Number one, cosine of the opposite of pi. Well, cosine is an even function, so cosine of negative pi is the same thing as cosine of positive pi, and cosine of pi, and we know if t is equal to pi, we obtain the terminal point negative one comma zero. And so cosine of pi would be the x-coordinate of that terminal point, which is negative one. Number two, we have cotangent of negative three pi divided by two. Cotangent is an odd function. So if you have a negative angle inside the argument of the cotangent function, you can evaluate cotangent of positive three pi over two, and just remember that you have in the opposite sign as your output value. So cotangent of three pi over two. Notice if t is three pi over two, we're at the terminal point zero comma negative one. And cotangent is the ratio of the x-coordinate divided by the y-coordinate. Well, that would be zero divided by negative one, which will give you zero. So cotangent of negative three pi divided by two will give you zero. Number three, let's evaluate sine of negative three pi divided by four. Again, notice that sine is an odd function, so if you have a negative angle as the argument of the sine function, you can evaluate sine of positive three pi over four, but the output will be an opposite sign. So sine of three pi over four, if t is three pi divided by four, that means you're in quadrant two, and the y-coordinate is positive. So that means sine of three pi over four would be square root two divided by two, but then you have the negative sign on the outside, so you have the opposite of square root two divided by two for the sine of negative three pi over four. So now let's talk about fundamental identities. The trigonometric functions are related to each other through equations called trigonometric identities. The identities in the following table will be used throughout the remainder of the course and extensively in calculus. So the theorem, fundamental identities. The reciprocal identities are those that we've already previously studied, and these are as follows. Cosecant is equal to one divided by sine. Secant is one divided by cosine. Cotangent is one divided by tangent. In other words, cosecant and sine are reciprocals of one another, secant and cosine are reciprocals of one another, and cotangent and tangent are reciprocals of one another. Also keep in mind that tangent of t 
Because tangent was defined to be the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate, tangent of t can be defined as sine of t divided by cosine of t, and cotangent of t is the x-coordinate divided by the y-coordinate from your terminal point, so cotangent of t is defined to be cosine of t divided by the sine of t, and that's because tangent and cotangent are reciprocal functions of one another. Since the terminal point p, x, y is determined by the real number t on the unit circle, then the x values and the y values must satisfy the unit circle equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. However, we've defined the sine function of t to be the y-coordinate of your terminal point. So if t defines the value x comma y as a point on your unit circle, so sine of t is equal to y, the cosine function was defined to be the x-coordinate of your terminal point, defined by t. So if t gives you the terminal point x comma y, cosine of t will give you the x-coordinate, or just x. If you're using sine of t is equal to y and cosine of t is equal to x, and the terminal point is x comma y, then you actually obtain three identities called Pythagorean identities. Sine squared of the value for t plus cosine squared of the same value for t must equal 1. And this is because we called sine of t y. So that would be y squared. Cosine of t we defined as x, so that would be x squared. So y squared plus x squared is equal to 1, or x squared plus y squared equals 1. And that is the equation for the unit circle. Now notice you have two other identities, and these are also called Pythagorean identities. However, if you know sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t equals 1, you actually can obtain the other two as follows. Let's say you take sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t is equal to 1, and you divide both sides of the equation by cosine squared of t. Well then the first term would be sine squared of t divided by cosine squared of t, plus the next term would be cosine squared of t divided by cosine squared of t equals 1 divided by cosine squared of t on the right side of the equation sine squared of t divided by cosine squared of t, that is tangent squared of t, because sine divided by cosine was equal to tangent, using the fundamental identity. So that means you have tangent squared plus cosine squared of t divided by cosine squared of t, that's equal to 1. So on the left side of the equation, you have tangent squared of t plus 1, and on the right side of the equation, you have the identity 1 divided by cosine, that's secant of t, and then cosine was squared, so that would be secant squared. So tangent squared of t plus 1 is equal to secant squared of t. That's another Pythagorean identity. And now instead of dividing by cosine squared of t for all three terms, let's say you divide by sine squared of t instead. You take sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t is equal to 1, and you divide all the terms by sine squared of t, you obtain this. Sine squared of t divided by sine squared of t, that's 1 for the first term. It's cosine squared of t divided by sine squared of t. Notice you have cosine of t divided by sine of t, that's cotangent. But notice that cosine is being squared and sine is being squared, so that will give you cotangent squared. So 1 plus cotangent squared of t is on the left side of the equation. And on the right side of the equation, you have 1 divided by sine squared of t. 1 divided by sine is the cosecant function. So notice that sine is being squared, so that will be cosecant squared of t. So 1 plus cotangent of squared of t is equal to cosecant squared of t. And that's the third Pythagorean identity. Notice that you obtain these last two Pythagorean identities if you just know sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t is equal to 1. So let's finish up this video with a couple examples. Example 5, finding all trigonometric functions from one value. Given the value of the sine function and the sine of the value of the cosine function, find the exact value of each of the remaining five trigonometric functions. Let's say sine of t is given to us as 1 third and the cosine function of the same angle t is less than zero, or in other words, the cosine function is negative at the value for t. We're being asked to find what are the other five trigonometric functions if we only have sine of t is equal to one third. Well, if sine of t is one third, notice that the cosecant function of t is the reciprocal of the sine function of t. So the cosecant function evaluated at t would be the reciprocal three divided by one or just three. So now we're gonna find out what quadrant do we lie in for the value for t. If the sine function of t is one third, the sine function is positive for this value for t, and the cosine function evaluated at t is negative because it's less than zero. If your sine function is the y coordinate and your cosine function is the x coordinate, in what quadrant is the y coordinate positive and your x coordinate negative? Well, that's only in quadrant two. So that means the terminal point for this value for t will actually be in quadrant two. Now let's find out the other four trigonometric functions because we have sine and cosecant now. So we're going to use a Pythagorean identity next. Sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t is equal to 1. Because we know what the sine of t is, we actually make that replacement. Sine of t is 1 third, but it's sine squared. So we'll take 1 third and square plus cosine squared of t must equal 1. So now we have an equation that we can solve for cosine of t to find out what is the value for cosine. So 1 third squared will give you 1 ninth. 
plus cosine squared of t is equal to 1. And now if you solve for cosine squared of t, you subtract 1 9 to the right side of the equation. You have cosine squared of t is equal to 8 ninths. And now if you want to get cosine of t by itself, you need to take the square root on both sides of the equation. So if you take the square root on the left side of the equation, you'll have just cosine of t is equal to plus or minus because we're taking the square root to cancel out a square power. You have to remember the plus or minus. So plus or minus square root of the right side of the equation, square root of 8 ninths. Well, the square root of 8 is 2 times square root 2, and the square root of 9 is just 3. So you have plus or minus 2 square root 2 all over 3. Now notice, the cosine function was negative. That was told to us in the problem. We know that cosine of t will be negative 2 square root 2 all over 3. So now that we know the cosine function, we can find out the reciprocal function of cosine, which is secant. So if cosine of t is negative 2 square root 2 divided by 3, that means secant of t will be the reciprocal, negative 3 divided by 2 square root 2. And if you rationalize the denominator by multiplying the numerator and denominator by square root 2 divided by square root 2, you'll find out it's negative 3 square root 2 divided by 4. That's the value for secant of t. So now we only have 2 left. We have to find out what is tangent of t and cotangent of t. Recall that tangent of t was equal to, using the fundamental identity, it's sine of t divided by cosine of t. Well, we found out sine of t, it was given to us as 1 third. And cosine of t, we found out, was negative 2 square root 2 divided by 3. So if you take these two and divide by one another, you can find out tangent of t. So sine of t was one third divided by negative two square root two divided by three. So if you multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, you'll have one third times three divided by negative two square root two. The threes will cancel out because you're multiplying and also dividing by three, which will give you one divided by negative two square root two in the denominator. And if you rationalize the denominator again, you'll find out it's negative square root two divided by four. That's the value for tangent of t, which means that the cotangent of t is the reciprocal of tangent. And so if you take the reciprocal, you'll find out that cotangent of t is negative 2 square root 2 because it's the reciprocal of 1 divided by 2 square root 2. So we were given the sine function of t is 1 third, and we knew that cosine of t was negative, so we found out the values of the other five trigonometric functions. Let's try one more. Example 6, writing one function in terms of another function. Given the value of the tangent function and the sine of the sine function, find the exact value of each of the remaining five trigonometric functions. So tangent of t will be given to us as one half, and the sine function of t is going to be a negative number. So you have to be very careful on this problem. Just because tangent of t is equal to sine of t divided by cosine of t does not mean sine of t is one and cosine of t is two. You have to recall that the sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t is equal to one because of the Pythagorean identity. Let's see if we actually get that. If we say the numerator is sine, and the denominator is cosine. So if you have sine of t is the one, the numerator, and cosine of t is the denominator, two, then let's see, does it actually satisfy the fundamental identity? Sine squared of t would be one squared. Cosine squared of t would be two squared. Well, one squared plus two squared is equal to five, not one. So it does not satisfy the unit circle equation. So you can't call the numerator sine of t is one, and you cannot call the denominator cosine of t is two. This is how we actually are going to approach this. If the tangent function of t is one half, we automatically know the cotangent function, which is the reciprocal, will be the reciprocal of one half, which will be two. So cotangent of t is equal to two. Now let's talk about what is the quadrant in which the terminal point lies if it's defined by t. So if the tangent function of t is one half, that means the tangent function is positive for this value for t, and we were told the sine function of t is negative. So if the tangent function is positive, and the sine function is negative, that means the terminal point for t must lie in quadrant three, because the sine function tells you the y-coordinate, so the y-coordinate is negative, so we're in either quadrants three or four, but the tangent function is positive only in quadrant three or one, so we're in quadrant three for the terminal point defined by t. So now we're going to use the Pythagorean identity. This time we're going to use tangent squared of t plus one is equal to secant squared of t, because we have the value for tangent only. Tangent of t was given to us as one half. So if tangent of t is one half, we have one half all squared plus one is equal to secant squared of t. And so if you solve for secant of t, you'll have this. One half squared will be one fourth plus one. So one fourth plus one will give you five fourths. So secant squared of t is five fourths. And if you want secant of t by itself, take the square root on both sides of the equation. And so secant of t will be plus or minus because you're taking the square root on both sides to cancel out an even power. You need to remember the plus or minus. So secant of t is plus or minus square root of five fourths. Well, that means it's the square root of five in the numerator and square root of four or two in the denominator. So you have plus or minus square root of five over two. However, we were told the sine function is negative. That means the cosine function must also be negative because we're in quadrant three. 
So if cosine of t is negative, that means the secant is also negative for the value for t. So secant of t will be negative square root 5 divided by 2. And since we know secant now, secant of t is negative square root 5 divided by 2, cosine of t is the reciprocal of secant. So cosine of t will be negative 2 divided by square root of 5. Or if you rationalize the denominator by multiplying the numerator and denominator by square root of 5 over square root of 5, you'll find out that cosine of t is negative 2 square root of 5 all divided by 5. So we have two functions left to find. We need to find out what is the value for the sine function and also the value for the cosecant function. Well, recall that tangent of t is sine of t divided by cosine of t. That doesn't mean sine of t is equal to 1 and cosine of t is equal to 2. We just know that tangent of t is 1 half. So let's make that replace it on the left side of the equation. So sine of t divided by cosine of t is equal to 1 half. Well, we also know cosine of t is negative 2 square root 5 divided by 5. So let's make that replacement in the denominator. So now we can multiply by the denominator to clear out the fraction and find out sine of t is equal to 1 half times negative 2 square root 5 divided by 5. And so the 2's will cancel out because you're multiplying and dividing by 2. And so you'll have negative square root 5 divided by 5. That's the value for the sine function at t. And because cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine function, cosecant of t is the reciprocal negative 5 divided by square root of 5. And if you rationalize the denominator again, you'll find out that cosecant of t is negative square root 5. So this time we start off with tangent of t was 1 half, and the sine function was negative for this value for t, and we found out the other five remaining trigonometric functions. So this finishes our video on trigonometric functions of real numbers. We talked about how to find and use the reference angles to evaluate trigonometric functions. We talked about how to use the properties of even and odd trigonometric functions. And we also talked about how to recognize and use fundamental trigonometric identities. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you in the next video when we talk about trigonometric graphs.